We've been living in New Zealand for 14 years and during that time we have been a loyal supporter of Sky Television. The main reason we started with Sky is because in the early days the only way you could watch TV clearly was through satellite because most of the channels in New Zealand was on VHF and were subject to patterns, ghosting um, and just general nasty quality pictures. It was actually worth paying Sky just for the local channels, uh, forgetting about the other subscription services. But nowadays there's such things as Freeview, which again is um, a digital medium, comes via the UHF aerial. So now there is no reason to subscribe to Sky. Why pay for something that you can get perfectly well through a TV aerial and you only need one TV aerial, not like before where you needed three. So you can get away with generally a fairly small, depending on where you live of course, single UHF aerial and this will give you all the local transmitted signals um, but not much else. It gives very good picture, in fact the picture quality due to the higher bit rate is much better I wouldn't go say much, quite a bit better than the same programs from Sky, which has more compression. The sound in particular is but is really good on the Freeview system, and Dolby Digital readily available where it's available, if that makes sense. Of course, one of the other reasons many people, including myself in the early days, would be subscribing to Sky is because of the other channels which you can get, Geographic, UK TV, stuff like that. But after you've been watching these stations for a while, you soon realise that there is virtually no new product. Now, to be fair, National Geographic, uh, Discovery, and one or two channels like that do produce the odd um, feature solely for their use that you probably won't see anywhere else. But saying that, even the stuff that they produce always ends up on standard TV anyway. The only advantage is you get to see it that little bit sooner. Most of the other channels contain old material, which is fine, but the chances are you would have seen it anyway, or you've watched it on DVD, or it's been on standard local channels. So you no, no, you no longer need these extra channels. Now Sky in New Zealand for the basic package costs $42 a month. On top of that you have to pay $15 a month for the decoder. Also if you want high definition you've got to pay another $10 on top of that. And if you add all these things together, particularly if you're into sports and you want film channels and things like that, the total amount for the package is astronomic. And I'm asking myself now, do I need this stuff? And I think the answer is no. Most of the stuff that I watch now, um, I watch via the internet. And I can also watch it via the internet in high definition. I don't have to pay anybody extra money to do that. Sky have now got this on-demand service, but it's the same shit that, that they've been showing for goodness knows how long. This is a decoder I have and I've had for well, ever since it first came out. Now here's another thing. I paid over $600 for this because in the early days you could only buy the decoder from Sky. Now here's the amazing thing, I've bought it, paid for it, quite a substantial sum of money, but I don't own it. So if I give up my subscription, I have to give that back to Sky. Now to me that's a case of having your cake and eating it. And I really disapprove of that. I would like to be able to give that or even sell it to somebody else for hundred dollars or so 
and then they won't have to pay the $15 which you have to pay for rental right now. So that's another thing that Sky have really pissed me off over. Another thing that really irritates me on Sky is the fact that you pay a sizable, sizable subscription and you still have the indignity of having to endure advertisements. Now I fully understand that some of the um, local stations, TV1, 2, 3, and to a lesser extent Prime, um, and some of the other ones, are purely supported by advertisements. And I understand that, um, and I don't have a problem with that, other than the fact that I like to skip past them anyway, which you can do very nicely with the Sky Decoder, I have to say. But UK TV, um, all the um, National Geographic and stuff like that, you're paying for that and yet you still have to watch 20 minutes in every hour of advertisements. and. To me, that is a double insult. You're paying for something and you still have to watch all the dress that comes out with it. Now let's talk about the film channels, which I have subscribed to in the past. My beef with Sky and the film channels, and, and Sky in general is, they completely know how to ruin your entertainment. For example, the film channels still broadcast in standard stereo, two channel stereo, which to be fair you can, uh, on some of the films they are encoded with ProLogic, so you can use ProLogic to achieve a sort of 5.1 sound. Apologies to people that don't know what I'm talking about, but it basically means they're using not a very good system. And you can't actually get Dolby on any of the film channels. The other pro problem is, after you've paid for the subscription, which I believe is about $20 a month, I can't remember to be honest, so don't hold me to it. But if you want to watch them in high definition, which is basically the standard in this day and age, you've got to pay an extra $10 for we'll watching exactly the same films, which they're already transmitting in HD, they just mess with the audio decoder so you can only view it in standard definition. So it's not like they're transmitting something special for you in HD. It's the same signal HD that goes to everybody, but they use your decoder, again, which you're paying for. You're paying them to downgrade you to watch standard definition. Now, the other beef, if you're a film fanatic, which I am, I like to see the films transmitted in the correct ratio. In other words, if the film is in widescreen, what is known as 185 to 1 in cinema terms, it will fill the screen pretty well. Um, I don't know why I'm looking at my TV, but it will fill the screen completely. And if it's the old standard of 4x3, which are older films will be, it will fill the screen except you'll have black bars down the left hand and right hand side of the picture. And if the film was photographed in what is known as Cinemascope, Panavision or something like that, where the ratio is 2.25 to 1, it will fit the screen in width, but there'll be black bars top and bottom. Uh, not very intrusive, but this way you will see what the original film was like and it was the way the distributor and the um, producer and the director shot the film they made it like that because it's almost like um, reading a book and half the pages have been torn out and thinking oh well you, know, you won't miss those um, but this is the annoying thing sometimes particularly on films like uh, uh, Turner Classics um, they actually transmit the widescreen picture within a 4x3 frame, which means you get a tiny little picture like that in the centre of your TV. And this goes back to the days of VHS when everybody had standard 4x3 television, so they had to doctor it 
to fit the screen. Now, bearing in mind that TCM own the rights to these films, therefore it's just laziness and ways of getting cheapness by not going back to the masters that they own and producing a new high definition master for it. They show this stuff and some of it, the quality is absolutely appalling. And the other thing that they will do, they will put promotions on the screen. Apart from the fact you've got bloody great logo on it saying Sky Movies or whatever, which in itself is annoying, they will come up with all sorts of logos and things that flash on the screen telling you about something else. Uh, why don't you do this or sub subscribe to that? Any possible way of destroying your entertainment value. And you're paying for it. To watch Sky Movies, you've got to have the basic subscription of $42. Then you've got to pay on top of that for the film channels. Then you've got to pay on top of that to watch it in HD. And you've still only got it in stereo. And it just got to the stage where I think, why am I doing this? If I want the best quality, I'll go to the local video shop and hire a Blu-ray disc. And it will be in the best possible quality. The sound will be in DTS or Dolby Digital, Master Audio, none of this bloody stereo shit. What you're looking at now is a shot from the screen of my TV and it's Sky Movies. And uh, I've just paused it because I want to show you one of the annoying things that Sky flash on the screen two or three times at the moment. And this is just one example because it's the only film I've got left on Sky, on my, um, uh, the my Sky, because I, I stopped the subscription to this some months ago. So I was hoping to show you some of the awful abortion mess they make of films shown in the wrong ratio. But um, nevertheless, this will give you an example. I'll start the thing going. I won't have the sound on because uh, YouTube gets upset about such things. And you'll see what I mean. There you go. Sky on demand. And then there's all that muck. And this is in between. This is while you're trying to watch the film. This keeps popping up and stuff flashing all over the screen. And uh, it just irritates me so much I can't tell you. Well, I'm sorry I've been ranting quite a bit on this film. And all you've seen is me and a quick snippet of TV. But um, this is something I wanted to get off my chest. And uh, I'm afraid <laughs> you're the victim of it. Anyway, so yeah, it's going to be goodbye Sky. And I should just use Freeview for my local channels. And the rest of the material will be split between Internet. I'm experimenting at the moment with Netflix. Which initially, I have to say, is better than I anticipated. Um, a lot of the films are a bit old. And... It's all American. Apologies to American people, but I don't like American dramas. It's all drama, if you know what I mean. Anyway, we won't go on about that because I don't want to upset any of you that have been kind enough to view this video. So it's free view and Blu-ray and internet for all the other stuff and maybe some Netflix, because they, after all, in HD and Dolby Digital, is, um, I think, twelve ninety nine a month, New Zealand dollars. We shall see. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.